In this video, I shall compare the Midland GXT67 Pro handheld GMRS walkie-talkie radio to the Rocky Talkie 5 watt model handheld GMRS walkie-talkie radio. But before I begin, I feel that it is very important to point out and to make as clear as is inhumanly possible that neither of these radios are for radio dorks. Both of these radios are what I refer to as adventure radios, which is a new term that I, the queen of all that is GMRS, just invented to describe radios not made for fat slobs sitting on their couch playing radio games. Nay, adventure radios are for normal people to keep in contact with their group whilst adventuring in the great outdoors or, in certain very rare cases, indoors. In order to be considered an adventure radio, the radio must be very simple to use, the radio must be rugged, the radio must be waterproof, and the radio must have a screen that actually works in direct sunlight. So in this video, I will demonstrate once and for all which of these two adventure radios is better, and I will tell you which one to buy. This is the Midland GXT67 Pro, and it was sent to me by the Midland Corporation when it was first released. Actually, they sent it to me several months before it was released at no cost so that I could share it with my vast worldwide online viewing audience. This is the Rocky Talkie 5 watt model radio and I paid full price for this radio using the monies that I collected from my supporting channel members and with some of my own allowance that I earned all by myself by washing my wife's boyfriend's truck. And neither manufacturer has any idea that I am about to pit these two radios against each other. So this video will no doubt be a surprise for one of them and a shock for one of them. The cost for the Midland GXT67 Pro is $199 of monies and the cost for the Rocky Talkie 5 watt model is $180 of monies. And for your convenience, I will put an affiliate link to both of these radios in the more information section below so that you can purchase either one of these radios for your very self or research more details on either radio. Both of these radios are GMRS radios, and according to our overlords at the FCCs, both radios require a permission slip from said overlords before you may transmit on one. No permission slip is required to purchase, own, possess, or listen to either of these radios, nor any GMRS radio for that matter. One must only purchase the permission slip, also referred to as a GMRS license, if you intend to push the talk trigger. As you can see with your very own ocular fluid containers, the Rocky Talkie is slightly smaller than the Midland. However, both radios weigh about the same at 9 OZs. And both radios feel very sturdy and very tight. Neither feels cheap nor plasticky. The Rocky Talkie comes with this high quality umbilical cord and carabiners to which you can affix to any part of your body that you choose to help keep from dropping or losing the radio. The Midland comes with a very nice carry case. Both radios have belt clips. The Rocky Talkie belt clip comes pre-installed and is made of steel, whereas the Midland belt clip is plastic and you must install it all by yourself. The Rocky Talkie has a removable antenna, so you can replace it with a larger antenna or even connect it to a large mobile or base station antenna, whilst the Midland antenna is permanently affixed and is not removable. 
The Midland has 22 GMRS channels, the standard eight repeater channels, 28 more GMRS channels with preset privacy tones that are not private in any way, and 49 user-defined channels. The Rocky Talkie has 22 GMRS channels and the eight standard repeater channels. Both radios can receive the NOAA weather channels and NOAA weather alerts, and both can do the skinny bands and the more wide bands. Both radios can make use of GMRS repeaters, and both are limited to using only the standard eight GMRS repeater channels. You cannot make your own custom GMRS repeater channels on either radio. Both radios output around five watts, and both have pretty much the exact same FARs. To help me demonstrate this point regarding the FARs, I used both radios to talk with my friend Conrad, the chef, at his house 13 miles away, direct radio to radio, no repeater. The Midland GXT67 Pro sounded like this from 13 miles away. Chevro, Chevro, do you copy? The Midland, how does it sound? Uno, go, straight, four, five. And the Rocky Talkie sounded like this from 13 miles away. Chepro, Chepro, do you copy the Rocky Talkie 5 watt model radio? How does it sound? One, two, three, four, pink And just in case you were not paying attention, both radios sounded very good with no significant difference in clarity. However, to my ear, the Rocky Talkie had slightly better audio quality. However, it should be made abundantly clear that audio quality is not a criteria when grading adventure radios, so you are hereby instructed to disregard my last statement. Both radios have an automatic squelch, which means you do not have to think nor worry about setting the squelch level. And in my experience in using both of these radios, the squelch setting on the Rocky Talkie radio cuts out more static and more very weak signals than the Midland, meaning that the Midland picks up more very weak and mostly inaudible signals. What I am saying is I hear more static on the Midland than I hear on the Rocky Talkie, but overall I would say that the automatic squelch on both radios is very good. Both radios have the same IP67 waterproof rating, however... What really matters about waterproofness is how well the microphone performs right after it emerges from the water. Because as many people probably do not know, when water gets inside of a radio, it takes only a single drop of water on the microphone inside to muffle the microphone sound or significantly reduce the volume. So to test the water shedding, as us radio experts refer to it as, I submerged each radio in water for 30 seconds and then immediately transmitted. And this is how they sounded. This is a test of the Rocky Talkie right after being submerged. One, two, three, four, five. This is a test of the Midland after being submerged. One, two, three, four, five. And as you could hear with your very own sonic input holes, both radios sounded okay. However, the volume on the Midland radio was significantly lower than the volume on the Rocky Talkie radio. The batteries on both radios are screwed in securely, meaning that you do not have to fear the battery popping out if you drop either radio or bang one against a rock. The Rocky Talkie battery is user-replaceable, whilst the Midland battery is not user-replaceable. The battery in the Rocky Talkie has 1,800 milliamp hours, whilst the Midland has a 2,400 milliamp hour battery. And both radios are supposed to last for several days. However, that is several days of just receiving what really matters in the adventuring world and what the manufacturers never mention is how long the batteries actually last when you are transmitting because transmitting sucks on the battery much, much harder. So to test that, I charged up both batteries and left both radios turned on. I set them both to high power 
and randomly transmitted hundreds of times on both radios at the exact same time on the exact same channel and at high power for between 15 and 30 seconds each time. And I left the radios turned on in between sessions whilst I did my chores and took my naps. Now allow me to take a moment to avoid any confoculation and hopefully prevent any stupid comments from all of the very highly trained scientists leaving comments whilst taking their break at McDonald's. This test is not to see how long the batteries last. This test was to determine which radio lasted longer by using each radio identically until the lesser of the two batteries gave up and would no longer transmit. After 22 hours and hundreds of transmissions at 10 to 30 seconds long each, the Midland stopped transmitting at high power and automatically downshifted to medium power, whilst the Rocky Talkie continued spewing maximum RF electricities. After 28 hours and dozens, if not hundreds, of more transmissions, and with the Rocky Talkie still transmitting and spewing RF electricities at full power, and the Midland cheating and only transmitting at medium power, the low battery warning started flashing on the Rocky Talkie. And about an hour after that, the Rocky Talkie intermittently started going into receive only mode. And then, only minutes after that, the Rocky Talkie remained in receive only mode and would no longer transmit. So the Midland, even though it was showing zero on the battery indicator, and even though it was cheating and was only transmitting at medium power, it did last longer than the Rocky Talkie radio. To charge the Rocky Talkie battery back up, you simply plug in any USB-C's cable directly to the radio. To charge up the battery on the Midland, one must be in possession of one of the battery chargers. And without one of these two battery chargers, you cannot charge the radio at all, as you cannot charge the radio directly without a charger. Both radios have large, easy-to-read screens, and as you can see with your very own light collection sacks, both screens perform very well in direct sunlight. The Rocky Talkie does not really flash like that in real life. That is just an artifact of the refreshing rates on my camera combined with the frames and the ISO's bit rates and so on and such forth. It is all very complicated. Of the two radios, the screen on the Rocky Talkie is the most simpler and least busiest looking of the two. And now we're really getting down to the nitty grizzly and pulling the short hairs. The Midland has a Roger beep, a requirement of a true radio dork, but it has no side tone, meaning that the person listening to your transmission can hear the Midland's Roger beep but you cannot hear it. The Rocky Talkie does not have a Roger beep. However, it does have a transmit confirmation tone, which is like an inverse Roger beep. It makes a tone that only you can hear that does not get transmitted over the air. This confirmation tone is to let you know that you have successfully pushed the push to tuck trigger and successfully transmitted something that is important when wearing heavy gloves for things like snowboarding or mountaineering because heavy gloves can make it difficult to know if you are hitting the button or not. Both radios are very rugged and very tough. They both have cases that are very durable, made of some kind of very durable plastic. The Rocky Talkie also has this very thick and very tough rubber-like cover, which in my not very humble opinion, I believe makes the radio more resistant to cracking and breakage. The Midland has no such cover or coating. The Rocky Talkie also has no square corners or straight edges like the Midland has, which in my vast understanding of physics and extensive training in terrestrial flatology makes the radio less prone to cracks or breaks if dropped when compared to the square and straight edges of the straight-edged Midland. The Rocky Talkie also has fewer buttons than the Midland. So again, based on my vast online education in terrestrial flatology, I am going to equate this to less things to potentially break or go wrong. The Rocky Talkie also has no knobs, whereas the Midland has this very prominent knob, 
Not only is this one less thing to break on the Rocky Taki, but this also means that you cannot accidentally change the volume or turn the radio off during vigorous adventuring activities with the Rocky Taki, something that could very easily happen with the Midland. Both radios have a channel lock option to prevent accidentally changing channels during vigorous adventuring activities. The Midland channel lock is always enabled. To change the channel, you must always first hit the menu button to unlock the channel change buttons. On the Rocky Talkie, the channel lock can be enabled or disabled easily, as indicated by the lock icon on the screen. The Rocky Talkie is rated for use in temperatures from minus 20 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the Midland does not tell us anywhere what temperatures it is rated for, so your guess is as good as mine. As mentioned at the very beginning of this video, one of the things that defines an adventure radio is how simple it is to use. And this is exactly why radio dorks that never leave the comfort of their basement cannot comprehend why anyone would ever want to purchase an adventure radio. And some people will complain very loudly that nobody should ever buy one of these radios because there are other radios that you could buy that do so much more stuff and things. And this is because some people do not understand what the word adventure even means, unless you say that word in a sentence that also contains the words Bill and Ted. To keep the functionality of the Rocky Talkie simple, it does not have a menu system. You simply make most changes by pressing a button when you turn it on or pressing and holding different buttons. And it has fewer channels and fewer bells or whistles than the Midland has, making it very simple to use but with slightly less functionality. The Midland is also a simple radio, but because it has a few more whistles and a couple of more bells, such as group calling, vox, and automatic noise cancellation, all things that most adventurers will probably never need. Because it has all of these extra things, it has a menu system that for many adventurers can be the root of much confocularity. And now for the big finale, the climax, if you will. As a non-basement dweller and an adventurer, which radio should you buy? After watching this video, and I also recommend watching the full review videos that I have made for each of these two radios, and after familiarizing yourself with all of the options, features, strengths, and weaknesses of each radio, and determining which of those attributes best align with your active radio lifestyle, it should be very obvious that the one to purchase is whichever one best meets your radio needs. And this is something that only you can decide.